Welcome guys. So how you doing, hope you all are doing great. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto Master Forbidden Scroll and had Ancient Weapon. This is part 1 and, if you want more related this then do 300 likes on this video and check tree link for more. So let's get into video. You're the nine-tailed fox. Mizuki yelled at Naruto, thoroughly enjoying the look of pain and despair that was stamped across Naruto's face, as the reason for all that had happened to him in the past 12 years sunk in. Now die. Too fast for him to see Mizuki grabbed and threw one of the Fuuma shuriken from his back. Naruto tried to get up but just ended up stumbling blindly backward. He turned around desperately crawling on his knees to try and get away from the whirling sound of the shuriken, getting ever closer and closer. Naruto get down. Obeying Aruka, Naruto fell into a crouch with his arms over his head, hoping to slow down the shuriken so he didn't die. Then he heard the wet sound of a weapon hitting flesh and thought that his life was over. Then he looked up to see the pained face of Iruka as he coughed up blood. Running through his though was why. At the Hokage building a masked man in a black cloak was waiting for a meeting with the Hokage. He casually got up and walked over to the window and looked out the window and saw a blaze of activity as ninja were on every rooftop, looking everywhere and searching desperately for something. He hoped that it had nothing to do with the person he had come here to locate, for it would just make his task even harder than it already was. For the past few months he had gone from village to village, and he finally had traced a certain family tree to the hidden leaf. He shook his head maybe he was just being paranoid, and the incident probably had nothing at all to do with him or his objective. So he sat back down and folded his hands behind his head, he could afford to be patient. A few miles away Naruto sat behind a tree, listening intently to the conversation between Aruka and Mizuki. Naruto is the same as me. The same as you? Aruka sounded puzzled and a little curious. Anything is possible with that scroll. There is no way that Naruto, the demon fox, will not use its powers. They are right. Naruto gasped the one person who believed in him the one person who acknowledged him thought he was a monster. He was about to turn right there and leave the village behind forever when he heard Aruka speak once more. If he was the demon fox, but Naruto is different. He is an excellent student that I recognize. He is a hardworking, clumsy, and no one recognizes him. But he's not the demon fox, he's Yuzumaki Naruto of Konoha. Mizuki just looked at Aruka for a moment, his eyebrow twitching in annoyance as he grabbed that last of his huge shuriken from his back. Do you really believe that garbage? Aruka, I was going to finish you off after I had killed that demon, but that speech was really annoying. Now die. He then started spinning the shuriken like a buzzsaw as he charged toward Aruka intent on delivering the final blow. No, thought Naruto, I won't let Aruka die, and as he was standing there he felt a new power awake within him. This power felt different than Chakra, it felt darker and more violent, a power made up of pure rage and sorrow. He wanted this bastard to burn for hurting his sensei, the one person who acknowledged him as a human. He wanted Mizuki to feel the pain he had caused with that one statement that had shattered his peace of mind. Memories of rage and pain at the torments of the village gathered within his mind, and for the first time he felt strong. He focused that energy and gathered it all into his stomach. Where is sad aching for release, and he knew the perfect target for it. He leapt out of his hiding place and looked at this man, who now looked joyfully at the sudden appearance of the demon container. Probably happy, knowing that he was not now only going to get to kill Aruka, but also the demon itself. When he was mere feet away, Naruto took a deep breath and blew out the ball of hatred and anger, as it erupted from his mouth he felt all his emotions leave. So he stood there and watched as though disconnected from the world around him, as a small red fireball raced toward Mizuki. Mizuki in his dash to attack Aruka and kill Naruto, didn't see it coming until it was almost too late. He turned the spinning Fuuma shuriken in an attempt to block and dissipate what he thought was an underpowered Gakaku Jutsu. But instead of being dissipated by the wind the fireball continued though the winds and hit the shuriken which immediately exploded. Mizuki jumped back, but not quickly enough to avoid the fragments, as they sliced into his shunin flak jacket and gouged a deep wound on his left arm. He immediately looked at Naruto who mirrored his gaze of shock, not understanding what he had just done. Back at the Hokage tower the man stiffened and sprang to his feet, his mask falling off in his haste, and then he smiled, it seemed he did not need the Hokage's help after all. That surge of power he had detected in the woods clearly showed him where he was needed. Without a second thought, he disappeared in a blue flash, leaving the poor secretary sitting at the desk a few feet away, to rapidly blink to try and restore her vision to normal. Suddenly a figure appeared in the middle of the clearing between Naruto and Mizuki. He wore a long black cloak that covered most of his body, think a longer version of the cloaks that the Akatsuki wear without the clouds, and he had long blonde hair that flowed freely down his shoulders and piercing golden eyes. He looked toward Naruto with a look of pride that the blonde was not used to seeing, and when he spoke, his deep voice resonated with power. Not in many generations has one with your ability been born. 
and none have ever been able to tap into that the power that is you have until tonight. Bazuki seemed to have recovered from his near roasting at this point and scoffed pointing at Naruto his with his uninjured hand, his voice filled with disdain and hatred. Why are you complimenting that thing? It's nothing more than a filthy demon and it needs to be exterminated before it can kill us. At this point the stranger's head snapped around and a rage burned in his golden eyes and for the first time that night, Mizuki knew fear. The demon, shut up you bastard if you say so much as one more word. In his mind though Mizuki was forming the seals to a jutsu and at that moment he chose then to unleash it, Doten. Boulder crash no jutsu. Sorry I have no skills with Japanese and I don't know many Doten techniques. A huge spiked boulder was flying at him as Mizuki laughed while shouting in a crazed voice, for siding with the demon you will share his fate. Iruka was too shocked by the strange event going on around him and still too weak from the wound that Mizuki had inflicted upon him earlier to do more than stare at the huge boulder that was coming toward them. Naruto looked at him and grimaced, he refused to leave his sensei to die. Then an idea then pooped into his head and he quickly formed a cross-shaped seal and he gathered all the chakra he had and just as he was about to yell out his technique, the stranger put a hand on his shoulder and shook his head smiling. But the tremendous crash the area targeted by the boulder was covered in a huge cloud of dust. Mizuki smiled there was no way, he assumed, that this odd demon lover could have survived that attack, Iruka and the demon were now probably squashed underneath the massive spiked stone. He snickered as he promised to thank the man who had taught him the technique when he arrived at Iwa. He was sure that the Tsujikage would be happy to hear that he had put his teachings to good use. That pathetic Chun and Wanab and his friend couldn't possibly have lived through that. He waited for the dust to clear wanting to bring the head of the demon, if it was still there, to the Tsujikage to show his victory. What he saw next frightened him to the core of his being. With one swift movement of the wings attached to his back, the stranger blew away the dust cloud he had made by the shattered boulder. Inside Naruto and Aruka were staring at their rescuer with looks of awe as his true form was revealed. Due to the force of the technique the concealing cloak had been stripped away, revealing the stranger to be clad in a magnificent suit of black armor, but not just any armor. It was a crystalline structure that encased its wearer from the base of the neck down, and even though he had just used it to pound a huge rock to splinters the knuckles of the armor showed not even the slightest scratch. On his back were a pair of swords in an X and in between the large pair of wings, and he had two more swords one on each hip. But it was the symbol front of his armor that was the most eye-catching. For on the breastplate was a golden dragon with wings spread, its eyes were a pair of amethysts, and if he didn't know any better, he would swear that it was alive and watching. How dare you, the stranger's words were calm, but his body was trembling with rage. A demon. A demon. Without him this entire village would be nothing but dust. Without his power the true demon would have escaped long ago. The color of the armor began to change, and then he drew out two of his swords, one was a burning red crystal, and the other just appeared in his hand, as if he had summoned it to his hand, it made of pure white crystal that was lit from within with an inner fire like a miniature sun. His wings started to glow white and his armor turned a glowing red, but it was the aura he projected that sacred Mizuki the most. For his eyes filed all of his vision and the promise within them was that of a slow and painful death. Now you bastard let me show you the depths of your soul. I will show you oblivion right after your soul tears itself apart. Faster than any there could follow he flew at Mizuki. The following slashes came so fast that all that was seen was a flash of white or red light and cut of the same color would appear on Mizuki's body. With a final kick to his head that sent him crashing into a tree. The stranger then slammed his blades together forming a new sword, the bald of which was made of white and red fire in his right hand. He pointed the blade at Mizuki as he roared out the final part of his technique. Soul Nova slash ignite. Instantly all the cuts on Mizuki's body ignited in either red or white flame, and as he began to scream and thrash around desperately trying to put out the flames that now covered almost half his body. But all he managed to do was wrap himself completely in a shroud of the stuff. When at last the fires dissipated his entire body was burned black except for his eyes, which were locked in a wide-eyed stare of sheer agony, with only the whites showing. After looking down at the man with an expression of disgust, he separated his swords and looked over at the stunned looks on both Naruto and Aruka's faces. Never have I used that technique on one as full of hatred and malice as this Mizuki was in life. He sighed then sheathed his swords and walked over to Aruka, and he then placed his hand over the large cut and it healed almost instantly. Hiruka opened his mouth to thank him when a hand came down on his neck and his vision turned black. But the cry Naruto pulled out a kunai and ran to try and defend his fallen teacher, but was stopped as a black wing wrapped around him and gently, yet firmly holding him in place. Calm down, the man spoke calmly to Naruto as he turned his wing and head around to look at the struggling ninja that it held. 
It's alright I'm not going to kill him, however, and here he kneeled down and placed a hand on Aruka's forehead, and a blue light was shown emanating from his hand, it faded quickly though, and he stood up releasing Naruto. He has seen something that should not be known of quite yet, don't worry all I have done is modified a few memories and put him to sleep for the time being. Now I need you to come with me there is much that I have to tell you and not much time. The stranger then held out his left hand to Naruto, and he gingerly took it. The man gave him a look that was filled with sorrow, wondering how hard his life had been if he was so fearful of human contact. Then again, he mused, it's not every day that he would meet someone like me. He considered summoning another cloak but decided against it. It wouldn't do any good and he might as well let the boy see the power that he too could gain in time. He shook his head to dismiss his thoughts for another time and looked down at Naruto and gave him a smile to reassure him that he had done nothing wrong. Don't be afraid, Naruto. The blue light then emanated from his hand and it gathered around Naruto until he was completely encased in a barrier made of blue energy. Looking at his surroundings, he couldn't contain himself. This is so cool. He looked back at the swordsman as though expecting a reprimand, but instead he was laughing a hand to his forehead as he attempted to gain control of himself. I guess it is pretty cool isn't it? Well the reason for that is that we are going to go somewhere where we won't be overhead and without the bubble you might find the trip there to be a little uncomfortable. He then drew the blue sword from his left hip using his right hand and slashed a vertical hole in the air, he then motioned for Naruto to enter the glowing portal first. Naruto looked at him and decided then to try and trust him after all he had saved him and Aruka from Mizuki's Justu, maybe he had just found another friend. And so with that thought he stepped into the portal, and all sound was swallowed up in a terrifying roar. All that was around him was a whirling blue vortex, he shut his eyes as he was beginning to get nauseous, and throwing up in a contained space was not something he wanted to experience. When the roaring finally stopped he opened his eyes and gasped for he had never seen anything like this. He was in a large greenhouse filled with blooming plants and a grassy field that looked like it was impeccably cared for. There was a small river in the middle of the field leading to a lake where a few large koi lazily swam, basking in the sun. In the center was a small glass-walled room, in it he could see a few comfortable-looking easy chairs and a few small bookcases. He heard a sizzling sound and he saw the man stepping through the portal, shaking his head as though dizzy. What he saw Naruto trying to look everywhere at once, he smiled at his antics and cleared his throat to get his attention. Naruto do you like it here? Naruto looked at him, and he didn't even have to speak for his answer to be clearly evident. The stranger smiled kindly. Now Naruto, I know you probably want to look around here some more, but right now we have much to discuss and little time, so please follow me. He then led him over to the small glass-walled study in the center of the lawn and opened the door mentioning for him to sit down. Taking one of the easy chairs he motioned for Naruto to take the other one. Now I'm sure that you have more than a few questions you want answered now keep in mind that I won't be able to answer all of them, but I will try my best to help you understand what you are going through. Naruto looked at him with for a moment a confused look as he pondered what questions he was going to ask first. While he was doing that the swordsman debated slipping just a bit of his thoughts past Naruto's public mind to try and find out a little more about the boy. He decided against it, as if he was detected he would quickly lose what little trust he had gained in his act of saving the boy and his sensei. But he could easily guess what kind of abuse he had been through in a village that both hated and feared him. For in his lifetime he had seen many things both cruel and callous, inflicted upon the outcasts and scapegoats of society. But to inflict that pain on a mere child, to him that was absolutely unforgivable. I hope that he can forgive me for what I have done, he has been through so much already. As he thought this his eyes hardened and his resolve to help Naruto strengthened. I don't care about anything else this time I won't fail in my new role. As he was thinking all this, Naruto's mind was going crazy with a million different questions. Who is this man? What is with that armor? How the hell did he do that? How did he know my name? He finally settled on the one that seemed the most appropriate. Who are you? The stranger smiled, maybe this young one had more in him than anyone yet knew, for he did not expect a boy of 13 to ask a question that cut to the heart of the matter. You show a surprising amount of restraint considering your age, I think that would be the last question that most would ask right now. Very well to answer your question my given name and Bane fair and as for who I am. Dear Bane stopped and braced himself as if preparing himself for the worst, but he thought in retrospect, it is better for him to know now than to be accidentally stumble across this information at a later date so. I guess you could call me your great-grandfather. Naruto stared open-mouthed at Bane, still trying to comprehend the world-changing fact that the man claiming to be his grandfather had just thrust upon him. Finally he was able to speak once more. You're joking right? Naruto asked his look of shock still frozen on his face. Just tell me it's a joke already. When Bane remained silent and unmoving he knew he had his answer. 
His fist clenched open and closed unconsciously, and he closed his eyes for a few seconds as he tried to regain control of his body for a few seconds. Naruto shook his head refusing to believe it. They told me that all my relatives and family were dead that they were killed by the QB. They said that there was no one left, you hear me? No one. Bain sighed, I swear on my honor that I would never make such a sick joke, I think I'd rather die before torturing anyone with such a cruel lie, and you least of all, grandson. In the back of his mind he heard a snicker, and he mentally reinforced the cage holding it at bay. When he heard that last word Naruto's eyes snapped open and in their depths Bane saw anger, a cold fury that made even his sky-blue eyes look menacing. By then, Bane sat there waiting patiently for Naruto to finish. If that is really true, then why? Why did you leave me to suffer alone? The Bane's eyes a slight red aura was leaking out of the boy in front of him, and as he looked into his eyes, he saw them change from a deep blue to blood red silted evil eyes, eyes filled with rage and hate. He shuddered, knowing that the boy was unconsciously drawing on the power of the very thing that had made him all that he was today. The poor teenager who had not only just been though a very harrowing experience, but one who was hated and feared around the village of his birth for a thing that until now he hadn't even known existed. Not only that but he had just made it worse by turning his world on its axis once more, and so he could only give him the time he needed to process everything he was learning. Well he thought I hope he's not that angry at me, but considering what happened he needs a target to take his anger out on luckily I am a better target than any of the villagers that might have him killed. They would say he was out of control, and that it was foolish to let the demon live in the first place. Therefore he was not surprised when he saw Naruto's attack, and he knew that in here he could easily have stopped the attack from connecting. He also knew that if he did so he would destroy any chance he had at having a regaining his trust and having family again. So instead he merely sat there when Naruto drew his fist back and nailed him in the jaw hard with a powerful haymaker. The blow, enhanced by QB's chakra, was strong enough to send him flying back, shattering the glass, and he landed only a few inches away from the koi pond. The ridges and seams of his armor digging into the ground uprooting the grass making a large furrow in dark brown earth. In an instant Naruto was before Bane, his hand cocked as though ready to beat Bane into the ground, but when he looked into his eyes something stopped him. For in those eyes he saw the same thing that he had seen when he had looked in the mirror after a particularly bad birthday, pain. Not from the attack he had just inflicted upon him, but deep soul-wrenching pain, a pain he knew all too well. Loneliness. The red glow faded from his body, and his eyes turned back into their usual blue, though he still glared at the man before him. Great-grandfather no, he still owed him one hell of an explanation. As he got up rubbing his jaw, Bane looked at Naruto, pity in his eyes for the teenager before him. Who by no fault of his own, had been denied the chance to have a happy childhood. He knew also that no excuse, even if it was the truth, would excuse his neglect in Naruto's eyes, but he still had tell him the truth, and he had to know his heritage and his possible destiny. He was surprised though, at how Naruto didn't attack him further when he was done he had half expected him to try and kill him, but when he stopped he looked sad for a moment before reverting back to scowling. Naruto scowled as he looked down at Bane as he offered his hand to him. Don't think that this changes anything you still owe me one very convincing story. Bane took the offered hand and nodded, he already knew that he would owe him that, and much more for his past neglect, and it was a debt that he was well able to clear. I understand it is time that you know everything. Bane dusted his armor off in motion for Naruto to follow him back into the glass-walled study. When he re-entered it he closed his eyes and concentrated for a second, and the glass of the shattered wall reformed without a speck of glass out of place. He then looked back at Naruto as he sat down for the second time opposite him. This time he sat with arms crossed, still glaring at him, and his scowl still etched deeply on his face. He knew that he had one chance to regain his trust, he just hoped that what he was about to show him would do that very task. Bane sighed, he really couldn't blame Naruto for his reaction, but he knew that it would take some doing to convince him that this was the truth. He decided to show him what he had been working on for the past few years. He reached over to the bookcase and withdrew a large green book with a gold dragon, the exact same one on the front of his armor, on the cover and opened it and showed it to Naruto. This book is the product of full year of work to trace my family line that I started over 450 years ago. After numerous dead ends and much sorrow I finally made it to Konoha. Naruto blinked and then the significance of the number hit him. 450 years. That would make this guy ancient, but he didn't look that old only about in his early 30s. Curious to see what this guy was trying to pull he took the book and looked at the picture on the very first page. It was of a man and a woman the man was the exact picture of Bane, and the woman had shining blue eyes and long brown hair. Her stomach was swollen in what looked like the last month of pregnancy, and Bane had his hand on it as though rubbing gently. He was smiling at her as she looked back at him, and it was easy to see that they were deeply in love. Odd how many people long for immortality, but when those with even a shred of conscience have it can become a kind of curse. 
Hearing that Naruto looked up into the stony features of Bane trying to see if he had just admitted to being immortal or not. When he saw that he was being truthful once again Naruto had to wonder why he had never heard anything about this bloodline, or whatever it was, before. Meanwhile Bane's memories were in an uproar, for every time he had looked at that picture, he couldn't help but to remember what had happened long so ago. He couldn't help but feel like he had failed in his duty as a husband and a father. That he abandoned his wife to die lonely and alone without him by her side and his son to never have known his other parent. But he knew that he couldn't allow his emotions to run freely, not now, not when Naruto was probably feeling a million times worse. So he took all the pain and stored it for later remembering that pain can be turned into power. Naruto, a long time before you were even born I was ready to settle down for good, and I had finally found the perfect person to do it with. I loved her with all my heart, and so that is why I fought with everything I had to protect her. I thought I had failed and she was dead long ago it was only four months ago that I found out she had survived the cataclysm and still lived. The story is a long one and I will tell you what you need to know, but there is far more that will need to be told. Bane gestured to the outside of the room. This place is a dimensional plane I have made that time flow faster here than in the real world, and it comes in handy for when you need to obtain some extra time to heal or rest, but even here time is limited, and you are still not ready to know all that I have to tell you. Naruto's scowl was still in place despite Bane's story, and it deepened further upon hearing that. He was in no mood to have things sneak up on him and bite him later, but he decided to listen first and ask more questions later. The sad truth of the matter is that up until now I did not know that this planet still existed. Had I known I would have made sure that you would have never known the pain of loneliness like you do now, here Bane sighed, and his face took on an old look of such pain and defeat that Naruto couldn't help but feel sorry for the man before him. So he calmed his rage and decided to listen to his story. He was curious when his grandfather reached over and pulled out another book from a nearby shelf. Much to Naruto's surprise he did not open it but looked back at Naruto as he began his story. Long ago before you were born or Chakra was even discovered the universe was in great peril. The last of the Starcrafters were fighting against his force of unspeakable evil. Bane smiled bitterly. Many had fallen in battle to him and many of my friends, before I had unlocked the secrets of this armor and gathered the remaining crafters together for one final battle to end either him or us. Were it not for a lot of luck and this armor that I have on we would have lost, but as it is I am one of the last of my kind. He looked up at Naruto until now. You have the potential to become a Starcrafter like me, and my own ancestor was so long ago. Naruto blinked and gave Bane a look that was so confused that if it wasn't for the gravity of his last statement, the Elder Walker would have started laughing. As it was he couldn't blame Naruto as many others had, in the past, been put in this situation with the same basic response pattern. First of all what is a Starcrafter and how come I've never heard of one before? There are many things that can describe us, but there are three major differences between Starcrafters and normal people. One we are immortal, or at least we are unless our brains are damaged or destroyed. Two we can draw strength from our memories and form the very land around us. Lastly we can use our energy to travel at the speed of light shifting across the boundaries of space. Naruto sat there as he tried to absorb all of this, and Bane sighed and gestured, and yet another book flew off the shelf and soared over to Naruto. This is a text that contains information on what we were like before the great disaster, and I believe that it will help you to understand more later. All shall be explained to you, but first I think it would benefit you to see the birth of Chakra and the reason for my assumption of your world's demise. He then opened the book on his lap and fell silent, Naruto looked over at the book, curious as to why he stopped talking. So he got up and walked over to the Elder Walker. After flashing his hand in front of his eyes a few times he looked down at the open book before him. When his eyes made contact with the first page he felt an odd sensation, as though his mind was being drawn out of his body and into the heart of the book. As he looked at the book he saw that it had no words in it, just a swirling blue substance that seemed to be beckoning to him, calling him to come and see the memories of the past. At first horrified he resisted, but then he saw that though Bane's head was slumped down, a white ethereal spectral version of him now floated before him one hand pointing to the book, the other held out for him to clasp. Don't fight the call, this is the quickest for you to see the events and that happened in the past. In this book I have stored some of my memories, and it is there that you will learn the truth about your world. Intrigued by his words Naruto reached his hand out to Bane and clasped his hand, as soon as he felt Bane's hand touch his he felt odd. Light and unbound by gravity, and he looked down to see his body head slumped still sitting where he had left it. Then he looked down and got sucked into the in the blue swirls of the book. Two powers clashed in the middle of a field of star-studded darkness below the two was a beautiful green and blue jewel-like world that took Naruto's breath away. On one side was a creature of fire and darkness, and tendrils of the stuff lashed out at out the other figure, trying to entrap the golden figure and draw him in, but was unable to. 
though it wasn't like he was really focusing on just him, for there were about a dozen other crafters were also attacking him and dodging, making it very hard for him to focus on eliminating just one. It was in part thanks to the five blades that were hovering in mid-air that formed an impenetrable barrier of shining crystal that gave Bane enough of an advantage as to confront him directly. Suddenly from the darkness a blue ball shot out, and it was so odd that for a moment Bane just stared at it, and then he flew to the side getting out of the range of the attack just barely in time. For the ball exploded and turned into a wailing vortex, and Bane could only watch helplessly as a few of his comrades were pulled into it along with the planet that they were above. Bane just stared at where the planet once was, and he breathing hard, and his entire body started to quiver, and suddenly he let out a roar of pure rage and pain. H closed his eyes and Naruto though he could see tears leaking through his closed eyelids. Suddenly all the swords disappeared, but the red and black ones which when he grabbed and the pulse of energy that flowed though him twisted his armor when it was finished, it made him look like a living weapon, dark and powerful. Spikes of red and black could be seen though the black mist that covered his head and armor, and his wings too had visibly changed. They had turned blood red, and their edges gleamed as though every feather had been sharpened to a diamond-like edge. Besides the spikes and the wings the rest of his armor was hidden beneath a cloud of darkness. Still the changes weren't complete until he opened his eyes, and Naruto gasped at what he saw. Dawn was the calm golden color, and in its place were glowing black eyes with flaming red eyes that could be seen even through the mist. Dancing black and red flame erupted from the spikes on Bane's armor, and then he was gone, leaving an afterimage in his wake, as speed increased drastically. Where before it looked as though the Dark One had been playing with him, now all he could do was defend for rage, had empowered Bane to new heights of speed that enemy couldn't possibly keep up. Bane was moving even faster than in his battle with Mizuki, as he slashed at the extensions of the Dark Shroud, and his flames ripped at his enemy, even his wings shot clouds of red feathers that cut in quivering pieces of darkness off of the main body. Suddenly both the blades vanished, and Bane stopped clutching at his head as though in some sort of immense pain. The black mist faded, and the armor reverted back to its original gold color as the horrible transformation receded. Naruto gasped as the remaining tendrils lashed out in victory and grabbed Bane drawing him in where a gaping red maw of sword-like teeth opened up ready to devour him. At that moment one of the few remaining lighted figures blasted at the darkness with a beam of intense white light. The horror his concentration lost for a moment turned his head toward this new threat and blasted the walker with a burst of black flame. Through all this as Bane had done nothing to try and free himself, instead he smiled as a beam of golden light appeared before him and took on the appearance of a sword. Before the darkness shrouded figure could mount any sort of defense, a beam of intense golden light shot from the end of the sword and impacted the shroud of darkness. The light ate through the maw and as soon as it reached the head of the figure he exploded in an explosion of black and red flame and Bane was flung back. At that point Naruto was again in the swirling vortex, and in a second he found himself looking at his body from on top of the, now closed, book. He saw Bane's spirit re-enter his body, and it began shuddering as he became used to having a body once more. Naruto felt a pull toward his own body, and so he turned and re-entered high own body. Naruto felt the slight burning sensation as his soul re-entered his body and realigned within it. He opened his eyes and looked at his grandfather questioningly, the story had been interesting, but it had done little to answer his question. Why are you showing me this? Bane looked back at him and he put away the book before he spoke once more. I want you to know the history of where Chakra came from and the reason for why I didn't know of your existence, know this very planet's existence up until a few months ago. In the battle with the Oblivion Crafter named Bloodwraith, he used a technique you saw in my memory, a technique that seemed to be some sort of black hole summoning. We had no idea of what it was until we had dodged it and then to our horror saw the planet and a few of our comrades below us get pulled into its maw. Naruto nodded, and somehow this event gave birth to Chakra. Ban hesitated before answering I'm not sure I think that some form of radiation hit the planet in the vortex, and that gave birth to Chakra somehow. For in my many years of life I have never seen anything akin to that. Except for him. Bane suddenly roared out in laughter and between howls of it he managed to speak, oh the irony of it all. He goes and turns his back on his own kind to pursue this ability, and when he finally has at least a slight mastery on and he goes and does this. Now in his recklessness he has inadvertently made a whole planet full of people that can use the exact same energy as he can. Oh man the irony of it all is just horrible. He then sobered like someone had slapped him in the face and continued grimly. However that is the only humorous part of what happened. For at the time I had no chance to see what had happened to that planet and it is a miracle that any part of it survived that apocalypse. The worst part was that my wife was here when it happened. Bane buried his head in his hands, and for a minute Naruto thought would be the end of his explanation, but again he suppressed the pain of that loss the loss. 
in a minute he straightened once more and began again, I had no time for mourning though, for that last explosion was not part of my technique, but from his. Somehow he split himself into many smaller pieces and sent them all across the universe in an attempt to try and save himself. Bane smiled a humorless gesture that was more like a snarl than anything else. So even in defeat he still manages to be a royal pain in the over the course over 449 years I had found and destroyed enough pieces of his soul and power to account for only about one half of his power at the time of the battle. Then I found this planet. My heart leaped I knew that there was a chance that at least some of my family had survived and that maybe I was not the last of my kind. However while searching for the descendants of my dear wife, I found that I could discover no trace of any of the four crafters that had also been entrapped by Bloodwraith's technique. The only way I found you in the forest was because you used mana for the first time. I have heard of people accidentally using it to heal or to levitate things, but never have I heard of an untrained heir to use such an advanced attack before. Naruto puffed out his chest in pride here, and Bane smiled down at him. Yes, you certainly are very gifted. I just need to make sure you don't Bane to like that particular type of attack too much. Hey what is wrong with that attack, Naruto spoke up annoyed at Bane complimented and then Todd that his new ability was now going to be off limits. He wanted a family, but he didn't want to have restrictions placed upon him. I see no problem with it, and it gave me an edge in helping to save Veruka sensei and myself from getting cut to pieces, so what is so wrong with it? Do you remember the transformation that occurred after this planet was destroyed Naruto? Yeah it was awesome. Except you became like a wild animal, powerful, but feral. Well feral is a mild way to put it for at the time I was using my armor to amplify the powers of rage and pain, and you saw the result, Gan shivered. I don't what would have happened if Bloodwraith hadn't been there for I wasn't sure I could even stop what I was doing. He looked over at Naruto you two use black and red mana if I am not mistaken, and luckily you did not lose control or have any anger left over from it. I have yet to determine why, but for now I will teach you how to use those abilities in moderation to prevent what happened to me to happen to you. Anyway the choice is now up to you now I can leave and just give you scrolls and other tools in order for you to learn how to use these new abilities or I can stay here and teach you myself. Bane stood up and walked over to the newly repaired wall facing the pond, and his voice seemed to waver as he spoke his next words. I can understand if you still hate me and I won't force you to become my pupil, but I owe you much already, and I can at least repay you by helping train your new abilities, but as it is the choice is up to you. Bane stiffened unused to having such contact for as soon as he had finished his speech, Naruto had given him a hug from behind. You idiot I finally get a family and you think I'll stay mad at you for things done in the past. You may be older and wiser than me, but what you said was just plain stupid. Bane broke his grip then and turned around and gave him a bear hug tears also in his eyes. He had a family once more and to him right now that was all that mattered. As they exited the excited the portal he saw Aruka laying on the ground he knew what he had to do. Bane had went over exactly how he had modified his memory and so he knew exactly what Aruka thought he had seen. He saw Bane disappear, but he knew he was around watching to make sure that Aruka didn't remember exactly what happened. A second later Bane flew back to him and deposited the Fuuma shuriken that Mizuki had used on Aruka. After carefully wiping away the blood from it set it down right by Aruka's side. He then went and completed his preparations by taking out a black blade and stabbing it into the wounds that were left from the shrapnel, and then he opened up Mizuki's hand and deposited a kunai in the right one. Then closing his eyes and a slight blue glow was seen emanating for Mizuki's body. As he watched Bane complete the preparations for the cover-up, Naruto thought back to what Bane had told him about the technique he had used of Mizuki. The thing that startled him most about Bane's attack was that he hadn't really meant to kill Mizuki. He had used a technique that caused great pain to those filled with hate and corruption though. The technique that Bane had used was a very strong one, but it was one his that usually didn't kill unless the individual was almost pure evil. For the way it worked was that it took all the memories of hatred, pain caused and vengeance stored up in the victim, and then it used those memories in order to feed the fires left on the victim by the cuts of Bane's two blades. But those fires didn't just burn his body, but also his mind and soul. Bane had assumed that Mizuki would live, but he would probably be considered insane for the rest of his life, for as he had told Naruto, he had never killed any normal human with it. He was brought out of his musings by a groan from Aruka, and Bane froze and then disappeared, but Naruto had expected this no, other than the Hokage could know of these new abilities yet. Just as they both had agreed earlier. So Naruto got up and leaned against a tree with his arms akimbo. So far it was always going according to plan. Aruka woke up with a groan with a splitting headache, courtesy of the giant ninja star that Naruto had deflected coming down on his head. The last thing he remembered before he had passed out from pain had been Mizuki shrieking as a multitude of miniature fireballs raced towards him. Seeing the blackened body of Mizuki lying in a circle of scorched grass, Haruka winced. 
the hope that Naruto had taken out all his anger from the discovery of his prisoner Amizuki. He had no idea that Naruto had mastered the Gakaku Jutsu that he had shown him. Flashback no Jutsu. Iruka looked up as a snore interrupted him just as he was explaining the basics for using ninja wires in conjuncture with a shuriken or kunai. He heard a few quickly stifled giggles and a few hasty chuckles as he looked up trying to pinpoint the person who had interrupted his lecture. He expected to see Shikamaru with his head on his desk, with Choji elbowing him in the side trying to wake him up. Instead he saw that Shikamaru was actually still awake with his usual bored look on his face as he stared toward the true culprit. So he looked where Shikamaru was staring and saw the only other person in class who fell asleep so often. Naruto was sleeping in class, again. Naruka grabbed an eraser and threw it nailing the culprit with enough force to wake him up as the class stopped trying to hold in their laughter. Naruto looked up still groggy with sleep and saw Aruka glaring at him. Naruto this is the fourth time this week you have fallen asleep in class and that earns detention after school today. Naruto nodded as though that didn't surprise him and then put his head back on his arms, just this time he didn't go back to sleep. So Naruto, why were you sleeping in class today? That is more the kind of thing that I'd expect from Shikamaru, Haruka asked as he watched Naruto clean the desks. Naruto's smiling face went dark for a second and then he turned back to Aruka and to his eye, the smile that he now wore seemed a little strained. I'd rather not talk about it for now. Then Aruka remembered what had taken place yesterday and smiled. He knew what had happened, but he didn't see why that would be a tender subject or anything. Ah I bet that you just stayed out too late at the festival, didn't you? Naruto stopped cleaning and his smile disappeared completely, giving him a serious look that made Aruka wonder again what he had said wrong. Yesterday wasn't just the festival it was also my birthday, this mystified Aruka, as anybody else would have been happy that it was their birthday. He nodded as Naruto continued. Every year I have to hone my shinobi skills by hiding from the mobs that form to hunt the demon on that day. This means staying up and practicing and sneaking around the village trying to memorizing as many hiding spots and escape routes as I can. Aruka's eyes widened surely the Hokage would have provided bodyguards or something, but considering how it was one of the few holidays that that Anbu got off work, he supposed that that was the one day of the year that he and to fend for himself. He looked back at Naruto and was hit once again how his normally loud and energetic student was so grim and his heart went out to him. Aruka decided to sew something nice for Naruto and so walked over to his desk and took a scroll rack form inside it and pulled out on that had a red border around the edges and then carefully slipped it into his kunai pouch. He turned to look at Naruto watching him with curiosity and spoke. Naruto I think that the desks are clean enough I want you to come with me. Naruto followed Kyrios to see where they were going. Then Naruka took out the scroll and presented it to him at to Naruto saying words that the young blonde hadn't heard in a long time. Happy birthday Naruto. A jutsu scroll. Thank you Aruka sensei Okay I am going to show you how to do this jutsu. Now first you do the seals then you concentrate chakra in your lungs and focus to change it into fire as you breath out. Here let me show you. He walked over until he was about 10 or so feet from one of the practice dummies. He went slowly through the seals making sure that Naruto could see them well instead of flashing through them. Peyton Gakaku no Jutsu. The stream of fire expanded forming a ball of fire around one of the dummies and when it dissipated Naruto could see that the dummy was toast, literally. Haruka then had him stand back to another dummies and ask him to repeat the seals. Slowly he went through them and nodded when he got the sequence and the seals correct. He then looked at Naruto and backed away slightly. Okay Naruto now you let's see you try it. After a few hours of practice Naruto still couldn't get the jutsu. Haruka looked at his watch and saw that it was already late. Hey Naruto, I have to go grade some papers before class tomorrow. If you need some help just look at the scroll. Naruto looked up form his latest failure to dot a jutsu and smiled his trademark smile. Okay sensei and I promise you that I will learn this jutsu soon. Then he thought of something and his smile widened, Haruka sensei I have an idea just let me try one last time. Aruka sighed and turned back to his student and nodded, but decided that this time he would stand a bit further back. He didn't know what he was going to try, but when watching someone experiment with a Keaton Jutsu, it's a very, very good idea to be a safe distance away from them. So when he was about 5 feet to the side he nodded for Naruto to try once more. He was glad that he had stood back. For somehow this time Naruto actually managed to make a mid-sized stream of fire, just before it all blew up in his face. Luckily with the amount of power he had put into it all that happened to him was that his face became blackened with soot. Haruka really tried to not laugh as him, but it came out. First as a snicker next a slight chuckle and lastly as full-blown laughter as Naruto blinked and shook himself like a dog trying to get the soot off his face. Haruka shook his head he hadn't expected anything like this. He had an idea of why this had happened, but he had to do a simple test to be sure. So he controlled his laughter and went over to where Naruto was trying to wipe the soot off his face. 
Naruto I'm just curious, but you were absent when we were learning what our primary element is right. Primary elements Naruto had a confused look on his face that told him that he had no idea what he was talking about. Iruka took out a small white card and channeled a bit of chakra into it, and it burst into flames. Naruto watched with wide eyes as Iruka slipped into his lecture mode. Yes yeah, so you take one of these cards and put a bit of chakra into them, and depending on what happens to it, show what your primary element is. Primary elements are the ones whose jutsu you have the least difficulty mastering, and also when you use them they take far less chakra use so many shinobi focus on their primary elements to give them an edge. My primary element is fire, and so I try to learn as many fire jutsu as I can. Now let's see what yours is. He held out another card to Naruto, and he took it, and after channeled a bit of his chakra though it, it sliced in half. Iruka nodded because after seeing the result of the Gakaku Jutsu he had expected this, but it still was a surprise. Naruto it seems that you have wind as your primary element, and that explains why the fireball exploded before you could complete it. You must have unknowingly channeled a bit of wind chakra into it, and that made it expand beyond the original parameters of the Jutsu, causing it to explode. Iruka held up his hands in defeat, I'm sorry Naruto, but I don't have many non-elemental Jutsu that you could learn yet, and I have no wind Jutsu whatsoever. This is unfortunate as fire is the opposite of wind, and so using that jutsu will be very, very hard for you. I'm just sorry that my present is not that useful. Naruto blinked and then smiled a real smile this time. What are you talking about? That's the first real present I have gotten in years. The first in years, thought Aruka, Naruto must have been like he was being an orphan, and all, but he couldn't help but admire him for the his unending positive attitude. For he knew the pain of being an orphan all too well. It was the little things that hurt the most like watching other kids on their birthdays with proud fathers complimenting their sons or mothers kissing the cuts and scrapes to make them better. It was the last and worst feeling that stung the most though, the knowledge that no matter what how hard you tried, you could never gain or regain the same bond as you once had with your true family. Yet here he was still smiling despite the pain and moving forward looking toward the future. He decided that he should change the subject a bit and maybe get him another present to go with a jutsu scroll. Thus being able to use it like that was pretty amazing Naruto how about we go celebrate with some Raymond on me. As they were going to the Raymond stand another question hit Aruka, and as they were sitting down to eat, he decided it couldn't hurt to ask. Hey Naruto, before me who was the other person who gave you a present for your birthday? Old man Hokage. Really and what did he give you? My key to my own apartment, but more than that he also gave me my freedom. You see he pays the rent on the apartment and gives me a modest allowance to buy food and other things, and so without his help, I would still be stuck in that orphanage. Naruto's eyes took on a distant look for a second, and the next words he spoke were laced with emotion. When I asked him why he would do that for me he smiled and replied, it's my job to look after this village and make sure the people in it are happy. And that is when I decided that I was going to become the next Hokage. Because I want people to look up to me and respect me as I help make others feel happy. Naruka smiled despite all he had been through he really did want to have the respect of other and to help them. Naruto he thought you truly are one in a million. He came back to reality as Naruto finished his fourth bowl of ramen and while waiting for another bowl, said in almost as an afterthought. Imagine what I can do if I can learn how to make that accident into an actual jutsu. I wouldn't need to use exploding tags to blow things up, I could just learn to master that. If Naruto learns how to make a jutsu like that, then imagine what he could do in regards to pranks, Hiroka thought, oh dear I believe that I may have just created a monster. End of flashback no jutsu. I see you are awake. Hiroka looked up from where he was sitting and saw Naruto leaning against a tree with arms crossed, not knowing what mood he was in. Hiroka decided to be look at him for any clues as to his current mood before engaging him in conversation. Considering how he had just gotten his first kill he seemed pretty, well, normal. There was no reading him though for his face was expressionless. Or at least it was until the corners of his mouth twitched and his usual grin appeared once on his face. Why so glum Aruka sensei We did manage to get him after all. Aruka breathed out a sigh of relief, and Naruto cocked his head to one side curious. Naruto I'm just glad that you aren't freaking out about what Mizuki told you or about your first kill. What you mean this traitor? And here Naruto nudged the corpse with his foot. I didn't actually kill him just almost disabled him and put him in great pain, but then he took out a kunai and stabbed himself and then died shortly after. So I think he poisoned himself. Iruka looked at his hand and saw that he was indeed clutching tightly to a kunai. Iruka shook his head Naruto had performed better than anyone could have predicted tonight. Who could have predicted that Mizuki was a spy, it was too bad that Naruto didn't stop him from committing suicide. However it wasn't like something like that had been covered at the academy. But he was pretty lucky, for Mizuki had obviously been overconfident going up against a teenage civilian who was not even a ninja. 
thanks to that and the near-perfect tactics that Naruto had used setting up the ambush with his clones Mizuki. Wait, clones. Not only that, but when Mizuki had ignored them at first one of them had hit him in the back of the head, and when he had turned to deal with that clone, assuming it to be the real one, but then all the rest of the clones and Naruto had hit him with a barrage of fireballs. It was a good thing, he thought, that Naruto didn't put too much chakra into making those clones, otherwise he could have started a wildfire. How did he have the chakra to something like that though? Tonight Naruto had pulled off something that few Jounins could manage, let alone a boy not yet a genin. Looking at him he realized once more that Naruto's dreams for becoming Hokage might just become reality someday. That is if he still wanted that job of course. Depending on how much he had overheard from the conversation between himself and Mizuki, he couldn't really blame Naruto if he wanted to leave right there. He truly wished that he knew how much he had actually heard of that conversation just now. Hiruka felt for the slash in his back and was surprised at its lack. Instead he felt the slash in his shunin jacket and a scar to add to his collection. When Naruto saw him rub his back he started explaining. While you were out I gave you a soldier pill that Shikamaru gave for helping him sneak out of a troublesome class without being noticed, Naruto paused seeing Aruka's eyebrow which he said that it would speed the healing process, but that it always left a scar. Well sensei I have to admit that was the first time that that just to ever worked most of the time all that would happen is that I would get burned from it backfiring. Looking at him now Aruka realized how long it must have taken Naruto to get past that hurdle, and he had also learned a technique from the Forbidden Scroll in less than 4 hours. That was better than some Chuanins could do. He may not have passed the test, Aruka realized, but Naruto had worked very hard, and he deserved to be a ninja. Naruto I want you to close your eyes. After a few seconds Naruto started to get bored and asked him. Sensei can I open my eyes yet? Okay Naruto you can, now. Congratulations you graduate. Naruto looked shocked for a few seconds, then noticed Aruka's lack of a forehead protector and realized what he must have on then. He rushed and tackled his sensei in a flying hug, yelling joyfully. Sensei. Behind a cloak of illusion Bane watched as Aruka's removed his hiate and tied it around his forehead, telling him once he opened his eyes the news of his graduation. He smiled though this would make things more complicated he was happy for his grandson. It meant that he was one step closer to achieving his goal. He was surprised to find out hard much he still cared for his village, even knowing that the truth about his prisoner. Everything had been perfect, and it seems that the memory mod had been successful he was glad because that wasn't really his specialty. He might tell him someday about Naruto's gift, but for right now he was better off being left in the dark. For some reason it made him want to try even harder to earn the respect and admiration of the village that hated him. Bane shook his head, he would do everything in his power to help him accomplish that goal but earning the respect and trust of a village that not only hated but also feared him would be difficult. Especially since they refused to open their eyes and believe that he wasn't the demon sealed inside him. All in all it was a goal that might take a lifetime to accomplish. Dot he just hoped that Naruto wouldn't turn to revenge later if his goal proved impossible from the prejudice and hatred of the villagers. But the powers he would gain someday the destruction of the leaf village would be assured if such a thing came to pass. Also he wouldn't really blame or try to stop him if something like that came to pass. Shaking that grim thought from his head he decided that he had a meeting long overdue with the Hokage, and now that the crisis was over now was the best time to accomplish it. In an alleyway near the Hokage tower, Bane appeared in a slightly more muted blue flash. He smiled sheepishly wondering if he should modify the receptionist's memory so that she forgot about his abrupt departure. He decided against that, he decided that it would enhance his reputation in the eyes of the shinobi community, as they would most likely think of it as a unique form of the Shunsu and Jutsu. So he shrugged and, after summoning another cloak, he strode off toward the tower. He knew anything about the famous professor, then the Hokage had already seen the truth of what had happened today, and he now would have to talk to him personally. It didn't bother him too much, but he knew that he had to have more than a few allies in place in order to be in any position to better help Naruto. Besides getting the Hokage on his side was a goal of the highest importance. With his help he could become a shinobi of Konoha and then make Naruto his apprentice. Considering how Naruto had just become a ninja, he should have no problem securing that, but he also didn't want it to seem that he was any different from the rest of the graduating genin. He knew the situation with the older generation, and they were no doubt poisoning the minds of the younger generation against him. Any further special treatment would only serve to further isolate from him, and worse still, it would make it even harder to get friends. Besides, he though, as a dark tendril of thought inserted itself quite forcefully into his head. He would need friends to support him in order to maintain his sanity, in order to overcome the many trials he would face in the near future. So he would request that he still be put on a team as usual, but he would train him when he was not on missions. He smiled, he had never had the chance to be a father before let alone a grandfather, and so he was looking forward to spending time training him and watching his growth. 
Bane walked down the hall back over to the room he had recently teleported out of and was surprised when this time the receptionist immediately showed him into the Hokage's office. Ha he thought, the Hokage does have a way of knowing what happens in his village. Good, then that means that we should be able to come to an agreement. He sat down at the desk and looked at the two Anbu guards that had followed him in with reproach. He turned to the Hokage and made a simple request. I would prefer to make this meeting private, so could you do me a favor and dismiss your Anbu? The Hokage nodded to both of them, and they nodded back and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Bane sighed and looked at the Hokage with annoyance. I meant all of them. Saratobi was surprised to say the least that this guy could detect hidden ninja at Anbu level was no mean feat, it appears that he had underestimated his abilities. Damn right you have. The Sandane was shocked he had been looking at Bane the whole time, but didn't see his lips move even the slightest. Not only that, but he found the fact that he had also just read his mind to be very alarming. Sorry about that, but I really need this to be private, and that demonstration just now shows the kind of power I have, and the power that one of your shinobi can acquire. The Hokage was torn it was obvious after he saw what had happened in that clearing, that he had something he wanted to hide, and he hadn't done anything hostile yet, but he didn't know what else this guy might be capable of. If what he had seen in the crystal ball was any indication then he was a very powerful shinobi. Though he had protected Naruto then healed Aruka he had then proceeded to knock him out, and then nothing. For after that the image had dissolved into grey mist, and he had seen nothing of Bane, until he saw him rush off to prepare or whatever he was doing to Mizuki's body. Then he disappeared once more only to about a dozen minutes later walk right into his office. It was a good thing that I had a feeling he would show up and ask my secretary to cancel my next few appointments. Otherwise I might have missed the chance to meet with him. In fact he still had far too much to do in regards to the incident last night, not the least of which was upgrading the security around the Forbidden Scroll. It seemed that when it rains it pours. At length he decided that if this guy was strong enough to kill him, then he wouldn't try it using such a roundabout approach. So he stood up and made the sign for the remaining Anbu to leave, when they had left Bane finally relaxed. Thanks you, now I will use some of my power to prevent anyone from overhearing our conversation. He drew a blue sword and for a second the Hokage thought that he had fooled him into becoming vulnerable and was about to attack him. Then all he did was stab his sword into the floor and a blue light permeated out from it all over the room. The Hokage looked at Bane and raised an eyebrow. Is it really of such importance that what you tell me remain a secret? Bane nodded a grim look on his face, unless you want everyone with knowledge of my kind to come here attempting to gain immortality, then yes it most certainly is. The Hokage was in shock, and now he realized why Bane was so uptight about security. Did my ears deceive me or did you just say immortality? Bane nodded once more an amused smirk spreading over his face, that's right immortality why, it's one of the things that comes along with the last phase of a Starcrafter's awakening. Starcrafters? I thought that they were just a myth are you really? Yes, I am a Starcrafter, his eyes saddened and his hands gripped the fabric of his cloak, and I am perhaps one of the last left. Before I came almost everyone else was wiped out in the final battle between me and an evil who took the name Bloodwraith. It took all of the nine remaining crafters to stop him. Even then he killed almost all of us until only I was left. Bane's face hardened almost imperceptibly obviously the subject bothered him greatly, and he was putting a lot of tust by telling him about it all. For the first time since the meeting began the Sandium relaxed it seemed that he really had nothing to fear from this man. Maybe it was time that he cleared up why he had been so cautious. I'm sorry for earlier I have been feeling jumpy ever since I saw what Mizuki did. I thought I had known him in fact he had grown up right here in Kanoha, I just don't see why he would betray us. Bane waved away the apology, that's alright in fact it's thanks to another betrayal that I am here. You see it all started when an ambitious and foolish crafter took the name and legacy of an oblivion crafter named Bloodwraith. Bane then told of how the battle had come to pass, and of the final blow that had shattered the reborn Bloodwraith's essence to the far corners of the plains. After that the Hokage was lost in thought still trying to wrap his mind about the details of the story that Bane had just told him. Bane was just sitting there staring off into space as he for the second time in less than 24 hours was forced to remember that final tragic battle and his journey to find the modern day descendants of his family. He was about to ask another question when Bane recovered and continued his story. If that wasn't enough that battle separated me from my pregnant wife at the time I had assumed her dead, and I mourned it greatly as I searched through the plains to make sure that the tragedy of Bloodwraith was never repeated, Bane eyes took on a haunted look, a look that the elder Siratobi had seen only rarely. The only time that he could remember seeing it was when he looked into the eyes of someone either the very emotionally scarred or those poor shinobi who had been psychologically unprepared for the war. Their minds had snapped from the atrocities they had seen out on the front lines of combat during the Great Shinobi War. 
Many were dead and he had no doubt that most of them envied the dead more than themselves, even in his death, the pieces of the blood wraith seemed to have a life of their own, and they sowed chaos and misery in their wake. I saw things that no one should ever be subjected to things that would make even the most courageous warriors cower in fear and make even the most hardened hearts cry in grief. Compared to the last four and a half centuries of searching that brought me here, life here as a shinobi would seem like a restful vacation. So then, I am assuming that Naruto is the shinobi you spoke of earlier, am I right? That is the reason why you appeared to him that night. Bane smiled back at him he knew he had spoken truly, so you did see what happened. I had a suspicion that you had. Now if you could tell me all that you did see then I can fill you in on what you missed and why I did what I did. Afterwards though I will need to ask a few favors of you, that is only fair after all. I saw almost everything that occurred including the technique that you used to kill Mizuki and after that nothing passed your drawing out that blue sword. I would like to know exactly what happened after you pulled out that blue sword. Somehow it interfered with my jutsu. Also even without using a technique Tide's wrath can stop a sight jutsu eh? I'll have remember that, that just might come in handy later. Not much happened really I took Naruto somewhere where we wouldn't be disturbed or more importantly overheard and told him of his heritage. I thought that with his mental state he might attack me and I wanted it to be somewhere where no one would get hurt. So how did he take the news? Bane rubbed his jaw as he recalled Naruto's attack. Not too badly actually, though I did find out that he can throw a mean haymaker. The Hokage and Bane shared a chuckle, and then Bane's face snapped back to being serious, but seriously I need you to do me a huge favor and find a ninja teacher for Naruto. The Hokage blinked and cocked an eyebrow at Bane. I thought that you were going to teach him. I was but I have a bit of a problem here, and the reason behind this that, unfortunately, I am unable to use chakra like a ninja can. This means that I will be unable to help Naruto develop his ninja skills, and so I will need you to arrange for a few teachers to help train him. I have reason to suspect that Naruto's spark may be somehow connected with his chakra pathways. I can train him in the spark's use, but because I can use no chakra and I cannot help him to develop as a ninja, and so that is why I want him to remain here for now. Wait, do you mean to say that you all that you did night, that you did all of that without using chakra? If can't use chakra then how did you pull off that attack and that speed? My power as a crafter combined with my armor give me enough power to imitate many your ninja abilities and far more. That is the reason why I want you to make me into a Konoha shinobi, because I will not abandon the only person. The Hokage nodded, but he put up his hand to interrupt Bane. Wow after being Hokage for over 20 years, I thought I had seen it all, the aging Sandame thought, but after seeing what happened tonight and after hearing your offer, I think that I have once again been proven wrong. I think we are getting ahead of yourself I will first need you to think up a good cover story. I also need you to make some records naming me as Yamato Kenji a Jounin of the Leaf. The only survivor and now heir of the Yamato clan originating from the grass country. The Hokage nodded. That is all fine and good however we need to make sure you have a really good excuse for no one ever seeing you. Without a decent cover story for that living in the village would be out of the question. He laughed, Jounins don't just pop up overnight you know. Bane waved his hand and his expression was one of confidence. That's no problem for I have done things like that many times on my other worlds, he rested his head on his hand for a moment, then nodded, okay I have it. The reason the lack of people seeing me is simple enough to explain I was on the run from the Iowa Hunter Nin, as the last of my clan my breeding value for my bloodline was constantly sought after. It is well known that among the five shinobi nations they have the fewest Kekai Genkai, and so the story wouldn't appear too far-fetched. I came to the Leaf in order to gain asylum, and you decided to hide me by making me into a fake Anbu. You then made me one of your guards in order to help me develop my ability and to make me close enough to you so that you could protect me in case they had managed to track me down once more. The Hokage nodded all good so far. However it has been 15 years since that happened and so having served in Anbu, you have now given me an honorable dispatch and given me the rank of Jounin. Also there is other thing I require to be put on my record. I need you to put on there that I am not ever going to ever be chosen as a Jounin sensei. The Hokage looked confused why wouldn't you want that job? Bane reached up and scratched his head sheepishly. Huh, the elderly Hokage thought, I wonder if that is a familial habit. Does the phrase can't use chakra ring any bells? Oh right I had nearly forgotten. With your skills passing for a ninja shouldn't be too difficult. However I would need a place to put you so that you would be out of the running to be a Jounin sensei you have any ideas. Bane nodded and a positively evil smile spread over his face. I'm glad you asked about that for I can now tell you of the perfect place to put me and explain away my abilities. So I'm guessing that this ability would be the Kekai Genkai you mentioned earlier. Yup and you are going to love this, it's actually a level of the Starcrafter spark that will be extremely handy. The Sandane was intrigues for the legends had never spoke of levels of power go on. 
One of my abilities that I can use is one that allows me to access what is on the surface thoughts of a person's mind. Of course you have experienced this ability firsthand the Hulk nodded, wondering if there was more to this ability what he heard didn't disappoint him, that is only a small part of my talent, and it is the only part I can do without being detected. However if there are people you don't care to be damaged, then I can force my way past almost any mental defense and raid their innermost secrets. The Hoka gave Blanche to the thought and looked at Bane with some suspicion, wondering how hard it was for him to do such a thing. Bane saw his waved his hand in a dismissive fashion. It's actually a very hard skill to acquire, and as of such the weaker a person's will or body is the easier it is for me to get in. I'd suggest teaming me up with the interrogation department in order to help extract information from prisoners. Just be warned I am one person who will not be at your beck and call, I still have one more mission that I must complete before I can retire from crafter business once and for all. So unless it's a real emergency don't try and find me. This would be a very good thing he mused. Ever since Anoichi had retired getting accurate information from prisoners had been getting tougher and tougher, and with Orochimaru out and about plotting his revenge against Konoha. In truth this man just might be critical in helping to stop him. Not to mention with his power added to the hidden leaf we would stand a much better chance of taking him down an all-or-nothing fight. He looked at Bane once more he asks a lot, but with all that we stand to gain from this alliance, I believe that it is well worth it. Bane seemed to be contemplating something, then he snapped his fingers, and a blue ball about the size of a large marble appeared in the palm of his hand. He threw it to the Hokage who raised an eyebrow in question. This is a storage ball. I have put a bit of my power in here, and if you break it will return to me automatically, and when it does I will get to your office as soon as possible. The Hokage nodded and went over to the closet where they kept extra chunin and jounin jackets and held one out for Bane. He shook his head and then concentrated and his black cloak changed shape and color, and in a second he stood before him grabbed in a Kanoha jounin attire, the only change to his appearance was his hair which had become black. The odd thing was now the only evidence that he had a sword was the empty sheath on his back. Making the Hokage wonder where his other swords went. Bane looked at his new appearance and nodded once. Good but I think I will change it just a bit later. The Hokage raised an eyebrow, why did you need me to list you as a Jounin if you could just do something like that? Simple, because I needed you to put in the official records that I needed to back up my story. Otherwise just appearing out of nowhere like this would attract far too much attention. That said Bane pulled his sword out of the floor sheathed it and turned to leave. Wait. Where will you be staying? Bane stopped, I will be staying at the mansion owned by Naruto's father, don't worry I will make sure that no one sees that it is being used, but I will stay there until I can arrange to buy or rent something else. Oh and one last thing, I want you to treat Aruka's report as the official account of last night's incident. With what I did to cover the real event up the story he tells should be nearly rock solid. I'm assuming that you saw what happened after I we came back through the portal right? The Hoka again nodded and he continued, well that black blade I stabbed his body with injected a fairly powerful poison strong enough to kill most men very quickly, it is a fairly common poison on this planet and so there should be few or no questions asked. The Sandam yelled out one more thing as Bane was walking toward the door of his office. Be sure to meet with Ibiki and Anko and familiarize yourself with the Anbu headquarters a bit later ok. The newly made Jounin waved back over his head to acknowledge that he would do so as he opened the door and closed it behind him. Naruto walked up to his door so lost in thought that he nearly failed to notice the note tied to a kunai that was sticking on his door. He pulled out the kunai and took off the note went inside his apartment to read it. Dear grandson. The fight and the events after it took a toll on my armor's reserves. As of such I have gone to another nearby plane to go recharge I should be back by tomorrow. After your team meeting I want you to follow the map included in this letter. When you are there you will find the training ground that the Hokage has given to us to avoid anyone spying on what I am going to teach you. Until then I want you to read that book I gave you in preparation for the training. Congratulations on becoming a ninja. We will go out to eat and celebrate this occasion after the training is done. Oh and one more thing I saw saving this for later, but I decided that you would need something besides the book to keep you occupied tomorrow, so when you are done reading this look at the back of your door. Sincerely Bane Fairn. Yes I will look a bit different so don't be too freaked out, you will be able to tell who I am by my eyes which I never change no matter what form I choose. When he was done reading the letter he looked at the back of the door and found a straight bladed sword, just like one of the ones he had seen, Bane used along with a shoulder strap to allow it to be attached to his back. Naruto took it down tears in his eyes as he saw the elegance of the weapon and the swirling patterns on the dark blue sheath alone. The hilt was black with a silver dragon worked too into the handguard and when he drew the blade even in the dim light he could see that it had been given almost blinding finish. That was when he saw the note that was attached to the hilt. He broke the string on it and read the note. I have taken the liberty to put a few features on this sword that I believe you will enjoy. 
try out a few things to see if you can find them all. If you can't find out all of them by tomorrow then I will show you them. If you are able to get all four main features then I will teach you a technique to go along with it. Good luck. Thousand. Naruto took out the now sheathed sword and book and placed them in front of him. He was too charged up for adrenaline and the events that happened tonight to sleep and so he began looking from one to the other, wondering which he should start with. One day later. The next day Naruto woke up early and got a shower and dressed he put on his goggles out of habit and then caught a look at himself in the mirror and took off them off. He then went to pry off a board out of his floor and retrieve his hide. He made sure to tuck his goggles safely in the secret compartment in the floor that once held the forehead protector. He took a moment to look at it remembering the good memories this compartment held. For now is contained not only the goggles, but also the scroll given to him by Aruka sensei and now it also held the book that Bane had given him. Lastly it held the sword that Bane had given him here each for it and then decided that he would take it with him to train with it at lunch. The other day he had found three of the four main features and he really wanted to find the fourth. So he strapped it to his back Anbu style, he then went over to the mirror put on his all-important forehead protector. After taking a few minutes to admire himself in it he went to the kitchen to make some breakfast. He had hoped that this day he would be greeted by a bit more respect now that he was a ninja, but all he got was the usual jeers and silent hatred that he always got. So he decided to think about what he had learned from Bane's book to distract him from the glares of the villagers. The thing that intrigued him the most was the power of the spark that allowed a crafter to create the energy known as mana. It made it possible for a crafter to use the energy in the land, combined with his own memories and emotions, in order to unlock the energy hidden in the land. Not only that but in the later levels it also allowed a user to access the power merely by invoking by their own memories. Wade hadn't he done that the day he met Bane. How maybe he was already at that level, for he had never felt any power gather from anywhere outside his body. After all Bane had said that his spark had been unlocked that night, he had accidentally used that technique. Which he had made some seals too in order to make it look like it was an actual ninja technique. That was all Bane's idea to begin with, for if he used a few original jutsu, it wouldn't be nearly as suspicious as a seal-less jutsu. At first Naruto protested, but Bane had told him a quote that took him a while to realize, but it made a lot of sense. The greatest strength is the one that is hidden. He finally realized that the longer as you hid your true abilities, then the more the likelihood was that you would have element of surprise on your side. He arrived at the academy and took an aisle seat in the same row as the constantly brooding Sasuke Che. A few people came up to mock him for showing up, but all he had to do was show them the forehead protector on his head to shut them up. When everyone was silent Aruka held up some papers. Now I will be announcing the lists of teams for this year. Naruto was listening intently to hear who he would be on a team with. So far the first six teams were all people he didn't know and didn't really care about. Then. Team 7 Yuzumaki Naruto Haruna Sakura and Sasuke Che. At this point Kakashi was woken once again by someone knocking at his door, waking him for the third time in four hours. He cursed and put his pillow over his head in an attempt to go back to sleep, but then the knocking persisted. But he ignored it normally did that for one of the few fangirls he had left over from the Anbu Corps. Normally came over to bug him at around this time. She had been knocking for some time now he was surprised after an hour she would normally assume that he was still out on a mission, but this time she might just be back once more in that wedding dress of hers. It was then that he went into his little world of the many memorized issues of Make Out Paradise that he had used his Sharingan to copy word for word. This was something that he had frequently used to escape listening to one of Guy's rants about the springtime of youth. It worked just as well in this instance and lapsed back once more into a sleep filled with perverted dreams. Bane's eyebrows twitched he had been waiting here for now three hours and though he realized that A. Jounin needed his sleep, this was just ridiculous. He had better things to do than to wait for such a pervert to wake. He almost didn't even have to use any mana to hear what he was thinking about in his mind. He smiled getting an idea if this didn't make him realize he was serious nothing would. The Kashi was right near one of the hottest parts in the book when it was torn away and whatever it was that did it inserted a very disturbing interrupting the flow of his pleasantly perverted dreams. The Kashi was sitting on a chair at the hospital and Guy was before him in his normal green spandex but he was smiling and holding up another of his sweets, saying in his usual yell. Look Akashi while you were asleep your house burned down and you have lost all of your clothes. That is now not a problem. I have taken it upon myself to replace your wardrobe with green spandex and umber leg warmers, no thanks are necessary. Here Kakashi looked down and saw that he was dressed in the same disgusting attire, even his face mask was made of green spandex. So he did what any self-respecting man with any fashion sense would do. He screamed like a little girl and blacked out. He woke up in a cold sweat and when he remembered what he had seen, he shuddered. I have been waiting here for you to answer you damn door for three hours you lazy pervert. 
So unless you want to go on another ride over to Spandex World again I'd suggest that you had better open this damn door. He decided that whomever had just given him that message was very serious and that he should probably go and answer the door. The voice was far different than the annoying shriek of the fangirl and he doubted that she had learned telepathy or how to change her voice. That and after he had been sent to guy hell and back, he decided that whoever had sent these telepathic messages was not a person to be ignored. So he quickly threw on his normal ninja attire and went to see who or what exactly was at the door. Iruka expected Naruto to jump in the air when he heard Sakura's name called or glare at Sasuke when he heard that he would also be on the team. To his surprise he did nothing but nod and look over at his teammates and then stare out the window deep in thought. Sure he was happy to be on Sakura's team and annoyed to be on the emo team's team, but his main concern was still on Sakura. He wondered if she would like him if he showed some of the control that he had been working on with Bane. After all she liked Sasuke and he was so quiet that hearing him talk was normally a once a week occurrence. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto listened intently to Bane's instructions on the images he had inserted into Aruka's head for about the third time. He was getting bored, but he recognized the wisdom in memorizing this because his grandfather had gone through a lot of trouble to help protect his secret, so the least he could do was listen. When he was done he voiced a question that had been bugging him for some time. Alright Towson now that that is all over how much time do we have left until we have to go back? Bane looked over at the clock on the shelf. Am I think about two hours wait why are you calling me father? Not like I'm complaining but or anything but grandfather is my actual status. Naruto crossed his arms and thought for a moment, hm I guess it is because you just don't look old enough for that, and I have never really had a father Ruka was close to it, but we aren't related by blood, so that doesn't really count does it? Being related by blood doesn't mean that you can't see someone as a father however I'm glad that you see me as your father. Seeing as you paid attention to me throughout that entire boring yet necessary session of memorizing, I think that for the rest of that time you can do whatever you want. Alright. I was wondering if you could show me how to do that technique that I did earlier on command, please. Now Bane suddenly got serious, Naruto the technique you did is was something that used two of the hardest type to control. Red and black mana are very dangerous to use in large concentrations. Bane shook his head and looked back at Naruto, and his expression softened as he ruffled Naruto's hair affectionately and smiled sadly when he almost pulled away unused to such a gesture. You have been through enough already tonight, and I don't want to have to show you the dangers of working with such an advanced technique tonight. Oh what well, you said that we would do what I wanted. I am doing this for your own safety you do not yet have the discipline and the training to replicate what you did to Mizuki just like that, and discipline is at the very core of what I teach. The path to strength comes with discipline, and with that comes the cool headiness that will allow you to think in combat, and that is where a prodigy can strive to compete. I don't just mean discipline over your body, but also your mind, your emotions are yours, and so the quicker you learn to control those the quicker you will be able to do more with these new abilities that you are going to gain. Naruto pondered this for a moment so you want me to become emotionless he said not completely understanding. Does that mean you want me to try and become emotionless? Bane recoiled like he had been slapped. Absolutely not. I don't believe that ninja should be emotionless, but the abilities used to hide and control your emotions are a pair of extremely skills. I suggest that you try to limit your emotional outbursts to help you practice this skill. Once I know that you have the discipline required I will be able then I will be able to teach more about your awakening abilities. And flashback no jutsu. Four hours later all of the other teams had been picked up by their respective senseis and left. That is everyone had but team 7. Naruto was getting bored and more than a little pissed off at his sensei's tardiness, and so he decided to have some fun. So he grabbed an eraser, but then put it back and decided that he really wanted to make his sensei pay for being late. So he ran down the hall and picked the lock on the custodial closet and retrieved a bucket after tying a few strings to it, he set up a tripwire connected to the bucket. He then proceeded to fill and position bucket above the door. The Kashi was so distracted thinking about what his visitor had told him about Naruto that he walked right into Naruto's trap. The bucket of water tipped splashing all of its contents on his head. Looking around at the now laughing Naruto he couldn't help but wonder if Bane wouldn't allow him to get some revenge after that. Sasuke had a disgusted look on his face and was shaking his head, wondering how stupid their instructor was if he had fallen for such a lame practical joke. Lastly he saw Sakura chastising Naruto, although it was obvious that she had enjoyed the result of his prank as much as he had. While well, Naruto laughed and Sakura was scolding him. Inner Sakura was yelling, serves him right for being late. The Kashi decided then that he now had a small but important list of things that he needed to accomplish. Find out who did that and ruin his or her day. And lastly salvage his reputation by scaring the living daylights out of his students. The last part was easy enough he was really pissed at whomever had done it. 
He had almost no doubt about that considering how there was only one person who was now currently laughing his butt off, assumed that it was he who had set up the prank. All he had to do was project a little of the killer intent he was feeling right now and glare at the blonde-haired miscreant with his one visible eye. Outside on the roof now. The Jennings rushed to obey, but as soon as Kakashi vanished and the assembled Jennings slowed to a walk as they neared the stairs to the roof. There they met Kakashi who somehow was dry once more. Let's see my first impression of you guys as you are annoying. The team reacted to this statement with different ways Sasuke ignored it, Sakura frowned at the insult to her crush, and Naruto did nothing. Before that he might have let anger get the better of him, but he remembered what Bane thought was important for his training, so he let it slide. Well I guess that we should start off with some introductions. Introductions like what? That coming from Sakura was typical. Oh I don't know. Things like your likes, dislikes, dreams for the future, hobbies, stuff like that. Sakura raised her hand, Sensei how about you go first to give us an example. Kakashi pointed to himself me. My name is Hada Kakashi well my likes are well my dislikes are I have many hobbies. My dreams for the future, I don't really feel like telling you guys. The Jenin's eyebrow twitched in annoyance, great all we get is his name which we already knew. Okay blondie how about you go first. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto my likes include ramen and training. My hobbies include trying to learn new jutsu and eating different types of ramen. My dislikes are arrogant and biased people, and the three minutes it takes for instant Raymond to cook. Here he stopped and adjusted his height with a smile on his face. And my dream is to someday become Hokage, and then everyone will respect me. So this was the one that Kenji, Akabane, was talking about, he was in a word interesting. That prank he pulled might have worked on a chunin, but on a jounin so yes he was going to have to inflict some pain tomorrow at his test. Kenji had warned him not to do any damage in the test that he thought was today, so that he could start training him in his bloodline limit later today, but he had said nothing about a prohibiting a little payback. He had no idea that Naruto had a Keke Genkai. Heck he didn't know that Kanoha had any of those besides the Byakugan and the Sharingan. Hey Pinky. Don't call me that. Whatever you are up next. Okay focus we have to impress Sasuke kun Yeah I know that just let me do it on my own. My name is Haruna Sakura. Here she stopped and took a deep breath as though preparing herself for something important. What I like is, here she stopped and did a quick look to the side, the person I like is, here she glanced over once more to the left at the silent Acha. And my hobbies are, another glance followed by a small blush this time, and my dream for the future is Naya, here she let out a quiet, for her, fangirl squeal of delight looking over at, you guessed it, Sasuke. Talk about your one-track minds how do I get stuck with people like this? Kakashi thought, and what do you dislike? Her face turned dark and angry, and she replied with only one word answer, as she turned to look at the thing that had pestered her ever since she was in the academy. Naruto. I know that I was a little loud and annoying, but it was only to get a bit of attention and make people laugh at beat people cursing and attacking me. Okay so maybe I did go a bit far in my pursuit of her, and she took it personally, I guess I can see why. Naruto thought just a bit bummed out. Then his resolve strengthened and he raised his head and looked right back at Sakura thinking, but that was all in the past now I will work hard to gain respect the right way. As she hates him, ha I think I could use that to my advantage, Kakashi thought deviously an evil smile forming underneath his mask, but that would have to wait till later. Okay now, you the brooding one you're last. Sasuke opened his eyes and took a moment before answering, but when he did the dark emotionless voice that he used made Naruto shudder. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. There are lots of things I dislike and I don't really like anything. Judging from his tone one could guess otherwise Naruto thought. And I don't want to use the words dream, but I do have two ambitions the first being resurrection of my clan, and the last to definitely to kill a certain man. Wow an avenger a fangirl and a troublemaker. Kami you must really hate. Okay tomorrow we are going to have a test. The purpose of this test is to see if you are ready to become Genin. Hey wait we already took a test to become Genin back in the academy. Naruto burst out before he could stop himself. To his surprise Sakura also looked angry at Kakashi, and even Sasuke had his eyebrows raised for an instant before he glared at his new sensei. No, this is a test that all academy graduate take in order to see if they are truly fit to become genin. Meet me at training ground 7 at 5 am and bring all your ninja gear. Oh and don't be eat or you'll throw up. Well Jana. But that he made a few quick seals and vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto looked over to his teammates and then at his watch, he remembered the note that Bin had left him and saw that he had about 4 hours until he had to meet him at training ground 24. Naruto wanted to go and try to eat lunch with his new team, but he decided that the finding that last ability of his new sword came first. After all he would have plenty of time to get to know them, but only a few hours to uncover that last ability. He had tried everything he could think of from and had only found 3 of the 4 features. 
he decided that he needed to go find someone who could help, so he went to the one of the few weapon stores that wouldn't throw him out. On the way to Isaki's forge he stopped to get a sandwich at a deli he was about to enter when he got an idea. Going into a nearby alley he made a seal and hinged into none other than Sasuke Chia. A few seconds later he walked away with about half a dozen free sandwiches, munching on one of them happily. Man I should have thought of that a long time ago, Naruto thought happily, imagine the amount that I would have saved on food. The walk to his favorite weapon store took about half an hour, and he knew that he would only have about two hours to spare if he wanted to get to the training area on time. Aheyo Hanzo-san. Isaki Hanzo was a big man with iron-corded muscles, developed from hours of banging away at his forge-making weapons. He had short black hair that grew down to a full length, well-kept beard and light green eyes. It was his mind that made Naruto respected for the most though, for even with the villagers constantly calling him a monster Hanzo had never treated him any differently than anyone else. That would have lost him some customers, but his work was so good that people would still come by to purchase his weapons, and they would only leave when Naruto was actually present. Hey Naruto long time no see. Come to get a new set of kunai? No sir this time I need your expertise in examining a weapon. Well I man right man for the job. Tell me is it possibly that sword you have strapped to your back? Yes it is indeed, Naruto replied smiling as he handed over the weapon. After examining the sword for a few minutes he whistled softly. Hey kid this sword is really something else. Where did you get it? Hey, Tenten get out here I got something that I would like to show you. Tenten. No it couldn't be could it? Naruto was thinking remembering one of the few people who had been nice to him in that orphanage. Unfortunately she had been adopted only a few months after they had gotten to know each other and after that he had gotten his apartment. He had tried to ask what family had adopted her, but every time he had the curator of the orphanage would only slap him and tell him to shut up. He waited eagerly as he heard the door in the back open, and a girl with chocolate-colored hair and eyes wearing a pink Chinese sleeveless shirt and lost dark green pants came into view. She had grown and now was taller than he was by an inch, and she had her hair up in two buns on either side of her head, but he could tell that it was his childhood friend. Fenton Chan. Before she could respond Naruto had jumped the counter and grabbed her in a tight hug. When she realized who it was she returned the hug harder. Naruto-kun. It been a while why haven't you stopped by here before? Denton do you know this boy? Yes father this is the boy I was friends with from the orphanage before you guy adopted me. I see well he has brought in a very unique weapon, Naruto would you mind if Tenton has a look at it? The straight blade katana. Oh can I try it out Naruto? A look at Naruto who responded with a nod she took the sword and went back to the door motioning her father and Naruto to follow her. When outside Naruto whistled outside there was a grey enclosed room. There were about half a dozen well used, judging by the many stitched training dummies with targets on the six vital areas of the human body. On one side there was a wall with selves full of weapons. He could see that this place was well used and well cared for there were almost no scratches in the floor or any leftover stuffing on the floor from damage to the dummies. However in a corner there was a dummy with a multitude of kunai shuriken and even some short stabbing katana and a scythe stuck into it. Naruto raised his eyebrow at Tenten who following his gaze to the mutilated dummy. I was practicing a new technique using weapons from a summoning scroll when I heard father call me was called in here. I'll go back to that later. She unsheathed the sword and got into position and first did a simple kata, judging from the smooth way she was going about it, she was very familiar with this type of weapon. With a look of regret she sheathed it and handed the sword back to her father. This thing is remarkable. She turned back to Naruto, where did you get it? It was a gift, Naruto replied, hoping that they would accept that explanation and be done with that particular line of questioning, and sure enough the weapon smith and mistress were too involved looking over the weapon in greater detail to care about where he had gotten it from for now. And it is because of it that I came here. Denton looked up in surprise. Why? It doesn't seem to need maintenance. In fact this sword is better than many of ours. No, but the person who gave it to me asked me to unlock its secrets, and I've gotten three of them, but this last one has me stumped. The first three of them seemed to be Charka activated, but this last one really has me stumped. He watched as they looked over it and sheathed and unsheathed it many times, all the while looking out for anything unusual until. Wait why is the last piece on the hilt sticking out to the side like this? Huh, it feels like the hilt is a bit looser here. He pulled at it, but it refused to come off. Hang on a second, he went into the house and came back with a small pair of tongs and pulled gently on the last piece of the hilt. When it didn't come out he pulled harder until his face started to turn red, finally he acknowledging defeat he looked over at Naruto. Hey Naruto come over here maybe it only works when the owner tries that. Naruto shrugged and decided to try it heck it couldn't hurt to try. He pulled and it came right off he looked inside and saw a light brown almost tan cream. How looks like some sort of medicine. Hanzo held out his hand where Naruto could see a small blackened piece of skin. 
I was at the forge a few minutes ago, and a cinder hit me right there how about we see how effective this medicine is. Naruto nodded and handed the sword over hilt first. Hanzo put his finger inside and got a bit of it on his finger and spread it over the wound. For a moment he said nothing then he turned to Naruto. I would seriously like you to ask the guy who gave this to you about the instructions for that stuff. It feels like I don't even have a burn on it at all. I'll be sure to do that, Naruto replied as he fitted the end piece back on his sword. Tenten walked over and picked up a katana off one of the shelves. Hey Naruto up are you up for a quick spar? Naruto looked embarrassed at this and he put his hand behind his head scratching it. But Enten, I just got this sword a day ago. So that is why I am going to a teacher today to help me learn how to use it properly. I saw how you were using it just now and I don't think I'd last for 5 seconds. Enten smiled he was so cute when he did that. Do bad hey tell me if you want to spar sometime I promise I'll go easy on you. Hey how long until your lesson? Naruto looked up at the clock on the wall, oh I have about an hour before I have to get going. Okay then how about we catch up on some old times. I want to hear all the new pranks that you have thought up. Naruto smiled and nodded, after all, it was Tenten who had helped him gain a passion for pulling pranks. A few hours later Naruto was looking around the training ground that the Hokage had provided them. It had taken him a while to find because it had been partially hidden behind a rock wall. It was surrounded on one side forest, and inside there was a small pond, and there was a hole to the left of that that let light in. But you are on time. He looked toward the pond where Bane appeared, and even though Bane had warned him the extent of the disguise was still unreal. He was wearing black Jounin pants with a kunai holster on the left leg. He wore the traditional Jounin vest zipped up, along with a dark red long sleeve shirt that had black dragon designs twisting up both his sleeves, and he had only one of his swords strapped to his back. The most surprising thing was his hair color, for he had changed it to brown color somewhere in between Tenten's and Sasuke's. Like he had said in the letter his eyes were still the same, and in truth they were the only thing he could have used to identify him. A bit amused at Naruto openly gaping at him Bane spoke. What? It's not like I can wander around here in full armor now that would just look weird. Oh and also I have now taken the name Kenji Yamato a survivor from the Yamato clan, in order to have a decent cover story. So then is that what I am supposed to call you in public? Yeah, but in training you can call me whatever you want. Okay then now to get to the training. The first thing I want to teach you is my style of sword fighting. I knew how to fight with swords well before I even became a crafter. Luckily the armor and the swords are a set, and so that is why my sword skills are just as sharp now as they have been in the past. Besides then even if you run out of mana then you will still be able to fight. He drew his sword from his back and went through an incredible attack routine, before flipping the sword over and doing the exact same routine with his left hand. He then sheathed the sword and explained his reason for doing this. This is the first goal that I have for your kinjutsu skills. I want to help make you ambidextrous. That means that you would become just as skilled with your offhand as you are with your dominant hand. Now don't be fooled by my display just now at one of the hardest physical skills that I have to teach you. Many people give up far before they do half the things needed for them to become ambidextrous. This is one of the best skills that a ninja can have because when you can change weapons to a different hand on the fly, or you can surprise your opponent when he damages your right hand. When they expect you to be disabled then that can allow you to get the drop on an unsuspecting opponent. Now the process that I have is a long one, but it is very good. You will start with a single sword and go through routines with it using your right hand, and then switch to your left, until you can use both hands well in combat. Then the next step will be using two swords at once this requires being able to weave your blades in and out of your attack routines, without either getting in the way or anything like that. That is why it is the last level. And we go to that other place to train Kenji. He decided to call him that now to get used to using it in public. Bane sighed annoying slightly by the interruption, but was glad that he had remembered the request that he made him promise to earlier. Bane had forbidden him to mention alternate dimensions in an open area for fear of anyone else overhearing. There weren't too many texts left about Starcrafters, but the ones that were out there could spell big trouble for Naruto if it was learned that he had the potential to become one. Thank you for remembering what I told you about that, but no we will not be going there anytime soon. Going there eats a lot of power, and with the limited amount of time we have there it wouldn't be of much use. Okay Naruto the first thing we need to do before we start training is to add something that would go well with that sword. These would have been your father's originally, but as he is now dead they fall to you. He drew his sword, and Naruto saw that this one was the same blue one that he had used the other day. Bane was about to open another dimensional gate when the sword in his hand pulsed once, alerting him to a hidden presence just a few meters away in the trees. He stretched his senses out and frowned he didn't expect him to be the one trying to spy of them. Sighing, he turned around he knew that this would be one encounter that he wouldn't enjoy. Okay just come out now, I know you are there. 
That's it for today guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do please consider like share and subscribe. Also don't forget to check it out other video on channel. Thanks for watching guys take care.